So we've completed a part of the changes that we wanted to make to the edit screen. Uh, we can now add the office assignment, but we also want to be able to select the courses that they are teaching. And right now, course and instructor have a many-to-many -many relationship. So what we're going to have to do is create a view model that will pull in the data that we need to use. And we already have a view mo model folder because we've used view models before. So we're just going to add a class to this. And we're going to call our class. Uh, let me make sure I'm going to give you the correct name. Assigned course data. And then there's some code in hands on two here that you're going to copy and paste. And you can see we're pulling in course ID title and a Boolean, which indicates if the course has been assigned or not. And then there are some modifications that we need to make to the edit method. And this is in the instructor controller. And let's take a look here. In our instructor controller. Okay, so we've got the commented out one and then we've got the uh, new one in our new uh, edit action method. Right after uh, include office assignment, right below that, we are going to include the courses. And we're going to call a little routine to populate the assigned courses. We're going to pass it instructor. Now, below this edit action method, is where we're going to put this new private method. And I do have this set up so that you can copy it. If you don't feel like typing or if you're a poor type typist. So this is in hands on two. And we can go ahead and copy and paste right over that. Oh, and I can see I have a typo up here. Course should be capitalized. Hey, you should not have any red uh, squiggles here. <laughs> um, so basically what this does is it's retrieving the courses uh, for the instructor and the hash set just is saying if you know only include courses that are aren't already in the list.
And then here you can see that we have our view model. It's a list of assigned course data. This is directly from the view model. Then it goes through each course, gets the ID, the title, and whether it's assigned or not to that particular instructor. And then uh, we take all of the view model data and pass it to the view using a view bag. Now we're also going to have to adjust our edit post. And part of the reason that we had to put an action name here is because the signature is the same as it was up here for edit. And once we make this little modification, the signature is not going to be the same. So I do have a file that you guys can select and copy from. And where you need to paste this is right over the top of this edit post action method. And you'll notice a new one is quite a bit longer. Uh, first thing you'll probably notice if you look at the top is that we don't have an action name anymore, and that is because the, our signature is different, so um, it's going to know that it's a different action method than the one associated with get. We're still checking to see if the ID is null, and here you can see that we are retrieving all the instructors and the office assignments and the courses. So you can see we still have that same database call. And then uh, we've got instructor to update, which is our variable that's containing the data from the database call. And we have a string with columns. And then if um, the office assignment is empty, we're assigning null to it. Uh, so it'll have something there. And then we're calling update instructor courses and we're sending it uh, the selected courses and the instructor to update. So that's actually going to come down and run through this private little method here. Uh, and this is something that we just added. <laughs> uh, and so you can see we've got selected courses, we have our instructor to update. Uh, selected courses being the string. And then uh, if for some reason it is empty, we just create an empty list of courses and it's done. Uh, otherwise, we've got that hash set where it's looking at the selected courses and it's only going to choose a particular course once. And then we have the instructor courses with the hash set where it's going to basically do the same thing. It's selecting data only once. And then we get a little for each loop here. And then it wants to check uh, to see if the selected course contains the course ID. Uh, and if it is not included in the list of that instructor's courses, then it is added. Okay, otherwise, uh, we are going to remove that course from the list. Okay, so here it's checking and adding, and here it's removing the course from the list. And this is all done to figure out what courses this instructor is teaching. Okay, and so once it's done figuring out the courses that the instructor is teaching, we save our changes to the database and we redirect back to the index. And then you can see here at the bottom, it is calling populate assigned course data and it's sending the instructor information to the view.
Once we have this up and running, we'll walk through this code again because it's easier to understand what it's doing when you can actually see a working example. So at this point, we're done changing our controller and we need to change the instructor index view. Uh, we also need to change the instructor edit view because remember we were adding this to both. And we'll start with the edit view. Basically, we have to add a courses field with an array of checkboxes after the office assignment. So we just added office assignment and we need to add our new one right here. And I do have a link to the code so you don't have to key all of this in. Okay, so you can see it's kind of set up the same with the form group. And then we have uh, the class. We, we don't have the label. We just get right into the class here. Uh, we have this in its own little table. And then we have a row. And then we've got a list that we're creating with data that is in the view bag courses. And then you can see that we have a column, we have a uh, closing row, uh, and then we have an opening row, we have a column and a closing row. And this is going to display the checkbox. And it will be a little easier to understand this once we get it running. So we'll walk through the code once it is running, because I think it's a little easier to understand when you can see it. <laughs> uh, and let's go ahead and modify the instructor index. And we need to add a courses heading right after the office heading. So here's office. Let's add courses here. Uh, then we need a new cell. Or a new column. It's a TD tag. We're going to put it right above our action links. Okay, so we got a little for each loop here where it's going to be displaying the course titles. And let's save everything and we're going to run a build. And let's run it. Okay, hey, so we have uh, the instructor index. Immediately you can see the courses. So if we select, we should see those same courses listed here. If we didn't, that would be a huge problem. Okay, and so that was the change that we just made to the instructor index. And then if we do the edit, 
Okay, you can see that now we have all of these check boxes and there's checks in the ones that this particular instructor teaches. So let's take another look at the code. So what I'm gonna do is put this side by side. Hopefully, come on. And the modification for the index uh, was not that big. Okay, we didn't do all that much to the index. In fact, we didn't really change the controller at all. So you can see all we did was add a little heading up here, which is a new column, which you can see. And then we added a uh, detail, which is a new column. And we did a little for each. And we just kind of cycled through the courses that were included with this particular instructor. And we displayed uh, the course ID and the title of the course. That's all that's doing. Okay, so it's super easy to understand it when you can look at the example. Then for the edit, and this was a little bit more complicated. We had to include the courses in our link query. So remember, before you submit it, it's using get. So it's running through this, and we had to include the courses here. And then we also included this little private method. Uh, and the purpose of the private method was to select the courses, uh, to figure out which courses that the instructor was teaching, and to select those courses. And basically, it did a list of assigned courses. Okay, and you'll notice that not only do we have uh, all the courses, but there's checks in the ones that are assigned. Okay, and so that is how we figured out which ones were assigned. Okay, and this is using our view model. Now, if we make a change in what's assigned and we save it, okay, then it's going to be running through this one, okay? So we made a change and you'll notice that it's still doing that same link query to the database. Uh, but now uh, it's looking at last name, first name, hire date, office assignment. And then we're calling update instructor courses. So it's running through here. And it's trying to figure out what courses are now selected. So it says if selected courses is null. Well, what that would mean is that instead of putting checks in here, I removed them. So this instructor is not teaching anything, okay? Then it creates an empty list. Otherwise, if there's check marks in here, that means the teacher is teaching something. And so we need to take their selected courses and store them. And we've got the instructor that we're updating. We've got their courses and we are retrieving their course ID. Okay, and then it's just checking the list of selected courses to see if the next course in the list is selected and if it should be included or not. So. If it's selected, it's added to the list. If it's not selected, 
Okay, and if it's not selected, there's no check mark there. So if it's not selected, then it's removed from the list. Okay, so do we add the course to the list? Do we remove the course from the list? Okay, and once it gets done figuring out what courses the instructor teaches, then we save the database and we redirect to action or index action method, which is what you saw. Okay, so hopefully seeing it work live does help you uh, understand it a little bit better. Remember the first time that it goes through this, it's not going through post, okay, it's going through this one. And then once you make changes and you save, then it's going through post.